Welcome back into Studio 318 here in the Paul Miller Journalism Building at Oklahoma State University. You're listening to The Board of Battle with King and CJ. He's CJ. I'm King. Thank you so much for joining us. You're watching Suddenly Channel 112, YouTube Live, Border Battle On Demand, Facebook.com slash Border Battle Show, or OSU Student Radio, KXZY. Again, still joined by uh, OSU head coach Mike Boynton. Thanks for taking, stay, sticking around for the second segment with us. We appreciate that. So we saw the highlights there, those watching on TV, saw the highlights of the win at Kansas. You know, there were some inconsistencies during that stretch. You had Kansas and Baylor and West Virginia, Texas Tech, and Kansas State, I believe, was the five-game stretch. Um, is there something you take away from that heading into year two where, you know, if you maybe if you string a couple wins together, the RPI looks a little bit better for the committee or, or whatever that is, but is there some, some lessons you take forward as a coach from that, that span of games? Yeah, there's, a, there's always lessons to learn. Um, yeah, the RPI is kind of a flawed metric in and of itself um, because it takes things that are already built in and then extracts them and measures them on their own again. Like the non-conference RPI portion, your schedule is all, your strength of schedule is already milked into the process of coming up with your RPI. Well, then they extract your non-conference strength of schedule and makes it an additional component. But they don't do it for your conference schedule. So uh, it's kind of flawed in that way, and I think they're going away from that. So uh, I don't think about it in, in, re in regards to the RPI. I know that our league will be really good every year, so I'm going to have 18 games on my schedule that will be as difficult as anybody uh, will have. Uh, the non-conference, we'll continue to try to challenge ourselves and bring a marquee team into Gallagher every year. Uh, we'll play in an exempt event that gives us multiple games against pretty good competition. Uh, and then we'll also try to play another really good team on the road and try to have – you know, home and homes against two teams, and, and that way we got our schedule balanced from year to year. Uh, but learning the lessons through this league was a great challenge. You know, this league had four teams in the Elite Eight. Um, well, four teams in the Sweet 16 and three in the Elite Eight. And, you know, those are the teams that we got to try to compete against every year. So, first of all, you do that in recruiting. Uh, it's a great lesson, and, you know, you want to have enough, enough athleticism, talent, and depth uh, to be able to get through the rigors of a Big 12 schedule. Uh, the, the other thing is you got to be adaptable. The one thing you learn through that stretch of games is a lot of teams in our conference play very differing styles. Uh, so we played, for instance, against I think it was Baylor, and they played zone for 38 minutes on a Wednesday. And on Saturday we went to West Virginia, and they played – they pressed us for 38 minutes. And so – you got to try to win both games. You got to try to win them in different ways, and you have to be adaptable in both your personality and your scheme. Real quick, I want to ask you, you know, something Bob Huggins has never done, Eddie Sutton never did it, some of these great coaches that have coached in the Big 12, never beaten Kansas twice. Uh, was there anything Bill Self said to you after after that second game or, or anyone, uh, you know, shot you a message and said, you know, what an incredible thing that is, obviously, the first time it's ever been done when he's been at Kansas? Uh, nothing specific. Um, coaches are always respectful of each other. The coaches in our conference all are really high character people, and, and we've all um, shared some of the struggles, uh, similar struggles as we've got to this point in our careers. But I think they all understand how difficult the next guy's job is because they understand how hard theirs is. And so there's an appreciation when you do have success that's kind of unprecedented, uh, that there's just a respect level. Uh, accomplished there. So I think the league, the coaches in our league uh, certainly respect what our staff did and what our kids did and know that we're going to be a, a tough out for, for years to come. And as we continue to recruit uh, good athletes that will that'll work hard and, and want to be a big part of this program, uh, we'll continue to have some of those successes. Overall, since you've become a head coach, there's kind of a maybe a, maybe it's sort of a divide in college basketball for graduate transfers you coming in, how, how important are grad transfers for a new coach when you don't have necessarily the high school recruits in the building yet or not with enough experience to contribute? You know, because obviously Kendall Smith came in this year and was, you know, to a certain extent a godsend for the team, stepping in at point guard and playing, you know, pretty well throughout the Big 12 season. Yeah, no, it's, it's huge. Uh, that graduate transfer market is, a one, is one that we – we do a lot of research and, and digging on because it's not just getting a talented player. Uh, it's getting a guy who can fit into what you're trying to build and a guy who doesn't just have the mindset that this is an opportunity for me to play at Kansas and then that means I can have chances to get drafted. But want to want to come here and take a program who was picked 10th 
put them in position to finish sixth in this league and be close as we were to getting an NCAA tournament. You know, Kendall Smith certainly was a big part of that. Um, you know, and he had some struggles this year, but certainly was a big, big piece of some of the big wins we had. Had big shots against Iowa State and Kansas that will always be remembered, uh, and certainly against OU to send the game in overtime that that people will always remember for for, the, for a long time, even though he was only here for one season. So those guys have a great opportunity to make an impact, although a short one, uh, and help us build ourselves into a national championship contender. Now the the normal OSU kind of words are loyal and true, but you mentioned a couple things, passion. So things like that. Uh, when we're talking about, you know, p- coaches always talk about building a culture, um, and and you have the hashtag Let's Work. That's kind of been your motto from the start. How do you, you know, you have a lot of these coaches, whether it be high school, grade school, stuff like that, that have these catchphrases. How hard is it, and how do you take it from a hashtag, from a words on the chalk bo- words on chalkboard before a game, to actually having players that will carry it out? and building it into something that's actually visible on the court or visible in practice or in film room. How, do, how hard is that, and how do you do it? It's interesting you say that. I, um, you know, let's work really just as um, a way to phrase the way I approach things. Uh, and the work is a part of it, uh, and it's something that I take a lot of pride in and working really hard at everything I do, putting a lot of effort into it. But, but the let's part is the part that kind of gets lost. Um, you know, let's us – uh, let us work is really what it's about because it's about a lot of people and it starts with having the right people in place. You can put a phrase together to mean anything or to get people excited, but unless you have the right people doing the things um, that you want to do to have success or that you believe are going to give us a chance to have success, it won't happen. And we were very fortunate as a staff and me as a first year head coach that I have really high character kids uh, on our team and in our locker room every day. Then I had really great people on our staff that were able to take a mentality and a phrase and put it into work uh, to get a group of kids to buy into working hard for each other uh, and not being focused on whatever individual goals that they may be told are really important. Uh, So it it was really gratifying to see that kind of come together. uh, And it cultivated in, even though we didn't necessarily reach our goal of making a tournament, and and our ultimate goal is to be playing this coming weekend in the Final Four and and compete for a national championship. for us to get to the NIT and have those three home games and see, even on spring break, how people responded uh, to what this program and these kids did shows that there's a culture here already. We didn't have to establish a culture. We just had to re-identify ourselves with our culture. And our culture here has always been one that has a lot of pride in our basketball program. Uh, some of people's greatest memories of this university is spending time in Gallagher Arena. And our hope is that the future will continue to feel the same way. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you we guys. know Absolutely. Oklahoma, bas- Oklahoma State talk. basketball thank you guys. in a good situation for the foreseeable future. Thanks for joining us again. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the MLB and what went on in L.A. We'll get to that next. You're listening to The Border Battle with King and CJ and OSU Student Radio KXCY. <laughs> 